Hello and welcome. In this video, we will talk about options that are available to users when they rate and route a load. We do that to assign a route to the load, assign carriers to each segment of that route, and then calculate estimated freight for each of those route segments. The estimated freight can then be compared to the actual freight invoiced by the carrier during the carrier invoice reconciliation process. So let's take a look. First, we will open an existing load it has a single sales order. Let's take a look at it. It has a delivery address in California, 90210. And it has a shipping warehouse DC that has an address of 94115 in San Francisco. Let's go back to our load and click on Rate Route Workbench. First, we will take a look at the rate function. Click on it, we will be presented with a single least expensive carrier option that qualifies to serve that load. First, you notice that the from zip code is populated based on the warehouse zip code address, and then the to zip code is populated based on delivery address of our sales order. Based on that information, the system determined that Northwind truck is carrier that qualifies, and the cost of that trip will be $75. If we change delivery zip code here to a different one and click on the rate, we now see a different carrier, UPS, with ground service at $45. So the system looks at the criteria that we enter here to present as the cheapest available option. Once we're happy with that selection, the next steps are to assign result to our load and then continue with the rest of the load lifecycle. I think I will do a separate video on how to use the rate route workbench. So this is a rate, always shows you the least expensive option. Then we will use the rate shop. The rate shop will show us all the qualified carriers with their services with calculated rates. So we can see that UPS has a rate of $45 and Northwind has a rate of $55. Then we can change the zip code back to the original one, click on rate shop. And now we see same carriers, but different rates, $75 for Northwind truck and $100 for UPS ground. Same idea here, select the option you like and click on assign. So these two options work well for simple loads that have a single pickup address and a single drop-off address. What if we have loads that have multiple addresses? Well, we will use one of those route options. First, the route. You see that it shows us just two route plans and you may notice that the rate is not calculated. It still shows at zero. If we scroll down under the segments, we see what each of those route plan consists of. It has this pickup zip code and the drop-off zip code and it has multiple segments. This one has two segments and the first option has a single segment. So how were those created? For that, we will open a new tab and navigate to transportation, routing, route plans. In here, we have created three route plans. Each of those route plans has at least one segment. This one has origin hub and destination hub. These are defined separately, and each of those hubs have address. In our case, the first route plan goes from DC hub, which is origin hub, to 90210, which is the destination hub. For the second plan, we have two segments. They are going from DC to 90210, and then from there to 94115 hub. And then this one goes from DC to that 94115. But if we look at the results presented to us, we only see two options here. The reason being here is the system does the matching on the warehouse address. So the warehouse address for our sales order has to match to the origin hub address. So remember our DC warehouse has the same address as our DC hub address. And it also matches the address from the sales order, delivery address, to the destination hub address. And remember the 90210 was the shipping address for our sales order. That's why the route number one qualifies. Route number two qualifies because one of the segments, the first segment has the same destination hub address. And the route number three does not qualify because it has a different destination hub address. You may also notice here that if you change the criteria in this form to a different zip code, let's say this one, and click on the route option again, you would still see the same options. So this is the difference between the route option, which does not look at the criteria. It only looks at the address of our warehouse and the shipping address from our sales orders and the rate and rate shop. So now I will go back to my load and I will add a different sales order with a different delivery address. So let's do that. In order for me to modify this load, I will click on load planning workbench. 
This is a form that is used to add sales orders to new or existing loads. Click on the sales line tab, click on supply and demand, click on existing load. And I'm gonna add this existing sales order that is not assigned to a load yet to my existing load. Here it is, it disappears. Go back to my load, refresh it. This is a second sales order. And this one is to be delivered to 94115 zip code. Now I'll go back to rate route workbench and I'm gonna use the same route option right here. Now you see that I have a single route plan that qualifies. That is because I have added the second sales order with a different delivery address. So this route plan no longer qualifies because not all of my shipping addresses from sales orders have a match in the destination hub address here, right? It has one, but not two. And the only route plan that has both shipping addresses matched to the destination hub addresses is this one. Okay, let's go back to our rate route workbench. So you can think of this route option as the template. You create the route plan that can be used as the template to create a real route to be assigned to the load, and then the rest can be done manually. But what if I want to use the route plan not as the template, but also assign the carriers and estimate the freight rates for those? Well, in this case, we will have to use this route with rate option. When we click on it, we see that the system have the same result presented, but the rate is being calculated as $375. That is a $75 from the first segment and $300 from the second one. You may also notice that the carriers for both of those segments are different. When we go back to our route plan right here, we see that the first segment in our route plan has no carrier or service specified. What that would allow system to do is to do the rate shop specifically for that segment. So it has the origin hub address and destination hub address. It's gonna look for all qualified carriers that can serve that combination and it will pick the cheapest one. So in our case, that was Northwind truck at $75. The second route segment had hard-coded UPS ground service. Right? So we define that no matter what, this is a carrier to be used. And on top of that, we have also specified a spot rate. So instead of system trying to calculate a rate for UPS ground, we basically override it with a spot rate defined specifically for that segment for that route plan. When we click on the spot rate, we see that it has a spot rate of $300. We tell which carrier to use and we tell which rate to use. Keep in mind, if you specify the rate here, but do not specify the shipping carrier by clearing it here, you will have an exception, right? If we go back here, click on route rate, you see right now that the option with the rate is no longer visible. That is because I have this height exception checkbox checked. So if there is any exception that does not allow a system to calculate an estimated freight, it would not show it to you as a result. If you uncheck that checkbox, now you see that the rate that the system was able to calculate is $75. All of it comes from the first segment and it was not able to calculate the cost for the second segment because we have hard-coded the rate, $300, but we did not specify the carrier and the system was not able to determine one automatically. Okay, so let's click on hide exceptions again. Let's get back to our route plan and let's select this carrier again. We go back here. If I use this result, and click on assign here, I would have a route with two segments, I would have carriers assigned to both segments, and I would have an estimated freight calculated for both segments. And final option that is available to us is the scheduled route. If I click on it right now, you see that I don't really have any results right here. So what is a scheduled route? So the scheduled route, milk runs, is basically a recurring trip using the same stops. So if we go back to our route plan right here, this is the one that we will use and click on the route schedules. We see that we have no milk run routes determined yet. What we will do now is define the start date an end date and then the day of the week, which will it repeat with. So let's say every Friday, once we're ready, we click on generate routes, click on OK. Right now, nothing shows, but make sure to refresh the screen. And now I see routes, you see that they have start date, which is 714, which is next Friday, 721, which is the following Friday, etc. So we have five routes. Let's go back to our rate route workbench. And with that, let's click on the schedule routes. Now we see a result and we see that we have a shipment date of 714. That tells me that the first scheduled milk run was selected. Why? Because we have a requested ship date today. So if we want to ship today, the next available scheduled route is tomorrow, 7.14. But if we want to change the requested ship date to, let's say, 
middle of next week and do the schedule route again, we now see that the option showing us is the following Friday, 721. So it's picking the next available scheduled route. And then if we pick, for example, one that ships on Sunday 23rd, it should now pick the following Friday. So let's take a look. And it picks a 728 as the next available scheduled route option. It looks very similar as the rate and route option. So this is a, a brief overview of five different routing options that are available to us. I think you will use the rate and rate shop for the simple loads that have a single pickup address and a single drop off address. And then you will use the route and route with rate and schedule ride options for the loads that have multiple delivery addresses, which have to be sequenced accordingly. And the sequencing is defined based on the route plan. I think in the next video, I may talk about how we can take the next step and assign the result to the load and what to expect from there, what other operations are available to us. Hope you find that video useful. Until the next time, take care.